Sorry, in these videos I forgot to tell you where the documentation is for all of the stuff. So, you can go to github.com, actual, and then get into the docs folder, and then into programming, and then into creating a repository with profiles. And here is all of the stuff. Um, on with the show! So in the previous video, I showed you how to create a repository using uh, the wizard, and you can see the results of that here. So now I'm going to show you what the repo palms are and how to manipulate them and how to do stuff with them. So if we just have a quick look at the current state, which is f what was generated from the wizard, um, so we can get we can see all the repositories like this, or we can say kev test two three four five in there and that's just going to demo just going to show us our latest one so that's going to be a little bit faster uh, so we can see here that the name that we chose when uh, if we come back up here name and so we chose kev test two three four five and you can see that is sitting here here sorry that, that is sitting these two sorry three bits here so here is the name here is the profile and it's got a key of that and it's also got the name of that and those two will pretty much always be the same um, and by default this is the same as uh, sorry but by default the uh, profile name is the same as the repository name um, the only time when that would be different is if you've got multiple profiles for a repository um, say you're creating lots of different applications uh, that's when you'd have different names here. Uh, and the exact name, uh, it defaults that you could choose something different. You might want uh, KT2345 or something like that. Um, just uh, You would typically do it just to make something that's easier to type. Uh, you notice here we've got our description. That's probably pretty self-explanatory. Packages, this is where it gets interesting. What you do here, these are the packages that you want to include in your application for it to, to work. So if we go and have a look in uh, .actual and we go into repos, no, we're going to go into profiles, sorry, and then kev test and then packages. And we have a look in here and you'll see that we have uh, lots of actual ones. We've got no kev test ones. And that's because if we get into documents, development, kev test, and if we have a look in packages available, we don't have any. So that's why we don't have any listed in there. That's fine. So let's go and uh, rather than sort of uh, wasting time creating more packages, let's go and steal some from um, one of my other repositories and then we'll learn how to uh, we'll learn how to manipulate this to then bring in that functionality. So let's go and get another repository. So we're going to go github.com and done it, we'll do just fine. Installing it, let's go and grab this. Um, notice that the way that you install the repository has absolutely nothing to do with, and I'll just start this off. The way you install this has absolutely nothing to do with how these dependencies are resolved. So therefore, um, you can install it this way. You could use repo add, uh, sorry, repo install. Don't use repo add. Um, you could re use repo install, all this, and it's just going to show up as, let's go into the folder here and you can see it. Um, cd.actual, and we get into repos, and you can see here that, well, these two, are uh, symlinked, whereas this one here is an actual directory, and so that's just because of the, it's been actually installed inside the actual home directory. So you don't need to worry about that, it's just done it all for you. So first, okay, before we go any further, let's just prove that that works. So if we go done it today, and that's gonna, whoops, done it today, and you can see that, well, we've got nothing to report, but the program's working, so that's fine. Uh, so now we want to go and uh, add the done it functionality into into uh, kev test two three four five. So if we just quickly try that kev test two three four five, and we go today, and you can see it again. Go 
what you want <laughs> okay it doesn't know so that's fine so let's go over to here uh, if we go first do a repo list and this is going to give you a pretty good clue as to what's going on so you can see here we've got uh, done it and this is going to tell us uh, um, how we set it up so now if we just uh, go into another tab we go manage actual and we want to go repo palm define packages okay so this is giving us some examples how to do it this is showing so here is the actual um, command that we'll use and this is explaining what all of the different parts are so our repo name is going to be kevtest2345 kevtest2345 and then we need to say a profile name. So the profile name, if we remember, actually let's just take that away for a sec, we'll go back to the repo list. Okay, so uh, the profile name is the same again, so we can go kev test2345. Okay, now a short name. Uh, now, the short name is, if we go over to here, you can see here, this is the short name, and self and base actually have meaning. Um, so if we go back over here for a sec, um, if you say self, it's just going to automatically do everything that belongs to this repo. And if you do base, this is going to do everything that is in the actual repo. Um, and typically you want both of those in any given application. Um, so we can't quite copy that, but uh, the short name, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it is unique. If we went and set it to uh, self or base, we'd end up overwriting what's in there. So we want to just set it here. We're going to bring in the done it functionality, so let's just call it done it. Okay, now because we, if we had chosen one of these two, then these two parameters would be optional. But because we haven't set, uh, set them, then uh, we need to actually think them through. So the source repo, um, that needs to be done it. So we go done it. Okay, and then the package regex. And this is to say, uh, yeah, what packages do we want to bring in? Um, we can actually keep the default here. We could say dot star. Um, so we actually, I'm going to leave that there, but uh, we could just put in dot star like this. I'd actually put it in quotes. Um, so then we make sure that bash doesn't uh, do any funny resolution stuff with it but we can just leave it at the default and that'll be fine uh, just before we continue there do we want to have a look at what done it looks like yeah because if we go and have a look uh, CD done it and go into packages and you'll see we've only got one package there anyway but um, if we were going to say um, say there was a done it and weasel in there and we just wanted the weasel package um, then we would simply type in weasel like that and uh, I'm sure that's spelt horribly wrong but uh, I don't care I think we're ready to proceed now let's see if this works that looks pretty promising so now let's do a repo list again okay and you can see there that that is now listed in there and if we compare that uh, back up a long way and you can see here that looks very similar to the self one that's in here you can see that I've just lost my place there we go um, you can see the source repo um, has done it and you can see the package regex is dot star if we go down to the bottom here you can see the source repo has done it and the package regex is dot star cool so now if we go over back over to here where we tried running this functionality the done it functionality before this is still not going to work Ta-da! so the reason why it still doesn't work is because this information here is applied when the repository is installed so what we want to do is reinstall it manage actual repo reinstall and then we just say kev test two three four five notice that it mentions done it in here so now uh, we can head back over here and now that functionality is on there
The last bit I'm going to talk about here is if we head back over to what it looks like here, boink. So I've got uh, a mention about required parameters and optional parameters. So if we have a look here, what is required and what is optional? I'm basically treating pretty much all of it as required now. Um, the only exception is exec name and that is actually is not possible to not add that at the moment through the wizard. We could actually delete it. Let's uh, show you how to delete a parameter. Um, I'm a little rusty on this so it'll be a bit of fun. So manage actual and we're going to go and we want to go repo palm remove. I need to update this documentation by the looks of it. So we need to go repo palm remove and then we need to go kev test two three four five. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting the repo name and then the parameter name. Why do I have a value in there? Okay, so this this command is um, I need to do some updates. So this I'll update this when I finish the video. The profile name we need to be um, so that needs to be kev test two three four five. And then the parameter name that we'd like to remove is exec name bork. And now if we go and do a repo list of that again, and you can see that we no longer have an exec name on there. There's something to bear in mind. So let's go and do that reinstall. Reinstall. And you notice here, uh, no, you're not going to notice, sorry. Uh, if we now go over and try running this again, this is still going to work. And that's because we're not saying, um, there's currently no method of detecting that that executable is no longer needed. So it stays there, it'll still work. So this is why if you want to choose, your, uh, choose a different exec name, it's worthwhile doing it before um, users actually get to see it. Let's go and add that back in. And so we're going to go repo palm set. Now let's try if we can go, oh sorry, first repo palm set, and I'm pretty sure, yeah. So if I go back to here, and I just put a set at the end of this, because we've got the same thing. We want to say we want which rep repository we want, which profile we want, which parameter we want, and now let's call this um, Bob's timetable, just for the fun of it. And now if we head over here, uh, notice this will still work because we've done nothing to remove it. Bob's timetable will currently not work because we haven't done a repo reinstall, so let's do that. Reinstall. There we go, and you notice that it's done some stuff because it knows that it's got a, um, it knows that it's got an executable to run and do installs of. So now, if we go, Bob, Bob's timetable, and we go today, and you see that's all working. That is quite enough for this video. Um, please ask any questions, and I'll do my best to answer them. This is a whole lot simpler and easier than it used to be. I'm sorry it still sucks a little bit, but um, uh, it was basically to make it so it could actually do everything I wanted it to be able to do. And I've just realized there's another scenario I haven't shown you, so I'm gonna create another video on that. Um, that is all.